Hello and welcome to the Listening Posts unboxing channel on YouTube. Today it is with great pride that I'm unboxing not a new CD player, but one that I'm so enamoured with. Macintosh's MCD350. CDSA CD player. Entry level for them. Astronomical performance compared with everyone else. This player is astonishing. Twin speed CD-ROM, so obviously uh, spins it up twice the normal speed to ensure that it's got a buffer for error correction. Stunning 32-bit uh, 192K DAC, fully balanced in its, uh, in its circuit topography as well as independent single-ended. It's absolutely stunning. The build quality is second to none, the sound performance in its price is second to none. And given the fact that this is a CD player, in a market that maybe is being dominated with streaming, what we're seeing is people investing in products of this quality, because that format isn't dead, and the CD is king as far as the ability to overcome internet connection issues. All of those things, and let's be honest, the, um, the uh, reduction of sound quality that can be eliminated when using the physical media associated with CD. So, let's have a look. Like most Macintosh pieces, it comes in a ginormous box. Macintosh has understood for decades how important it is that their pieces arrive to you in perfect physical condition. So extra efforts are made by them to ensure the packaging is absolutely second to none. Firstly, the oversized outer box, which is stapled to ensure, I mean, it's, it's got thick cardboard, it's got all of the layers of protection. It's got uh, model and serial number information on every single corner. And Macintosh's factory tape. Opening these things is very, very straightforward with a simple cut across the Macintosh branded factory tape. As I'd always recommend whenever you're opening anything, lift if you are forced to drag the knife across the product, lift it up to ensure that there's uh, a reduction of the potential of cutting into something underneath. That precaution, though, is a little bit unnecessary with Macintosh, as we see the elaborate levels that they've gone to as far as the additional packaging. It's a box within a box, and that box is suspended with closed cell foam, so it's miles away from any straying craft knife. Lifting the player out is relatively straightforward. It's heavy, but very, very easy to get out, plonk down. Other than the staples that we see at the bottom of this big carton, there's nothing else. So getting rid of that, very, very straightforward. Then there's the inner box, which is suspended inside the much larger freight carton with the closed cell foam. The ends support the CD player and ensure that it doesn't matter how rough some freight carrier is, it's very, very easy to protect it so that it ends up in your living room in one piece. The unit has an emulation of the scannable model information we've seen on the outer carton and a flap that's sealed again with Macintosh packing tape. Opening that is very, very straightforward with a simple slide along the curved flap. And then open it like so. And inside again we see the elaborate protection that they've gone into with some folded cardboard specifically to sit on top and ensure that the uh, vibration upwards and downwards is mitigated with some folded cardboard. Next layer down we see Macintosh's elaborate and comprehensive user manual. It's a piece of work in itself and talks about every element of its operation, connectivity, and getting the most out of it via balanced, via uh, single-ended, and also plugging and unplugging triggers and controls as well. In the unit, as I tip it forward, we'll see some of the accessories. 
The first is the uh, remote control. Now this is the same remote used in a number of Macintosh's pieces. It means that there's a similar look and feel to its operation. And the remote is protected separately inside its own um, paper, uh, bubble paper bag. There's a couple of AAA batteries inside a Ziploc bag and then the remote. Beautifully elegant and as always hang around with some photographs I'll take some close-ups. The remote is designed to operate the uh, uh, CD player but will also allow you to navigate through some of its functions. There is a long and good quality IEC power cord and then the player itself. Now getting that out is relatively straightforward but I'm going to pause. The feet of the CD player nestle brilliantly into predetermined locations and the signature front display which kicks down a little bit with its uh, cheeks and glass frontage sits neatly into the front. There's no way of this moving or jostling around in freight and it's wonderful again to see such care and attention for products of this value and quality. Now, at this point, there's an oversized plastic bag, and carefully rocking it onto its side, it becomes very straightforward to just quietly nick the piece of sellotape that's holding it closed. Removing it from the bag is relatively straightforward, just a simple rocking motion. It highlights the desiccant, uh, moisture-absorbing bag that's in it, along with the fact it's in a soft cloth bag. So should it float around, it's not going to scratch any of the uh, um, surfaces of the player. So looking at it, and I'm going to tilt it forward for a moment, to ensure that you see its physical size. With circuit topography and layout often compressed in much smaller boxes, Macintosh have opted to have something quite large to ensure that power supplies and other potentially noisy uh, devices internally are well separated from the more delicate digital boards and circuit topography for digital outputs and analog are isolated as well. You can't have a small box to do that properly so they've opted for something of this physical size. Looking at the front and please as always hang around for some photographs I'll take some close-ups. We see the classic Macintosh styling with the extruded aluminium cheeks. We see the glass frontage and with screen printing and illumination from behind it means it doesn't matter how sticky the fingerprints might be a simple wipe with a cleaning cloth and it returns it to essentially factory new. It's a CD and SACD player and it has dual lasers on board to play specifically their layers and formats. Um, the logos are over in the um, bottom corner and beside that the ability to change with a tap of a button the display to show the time whether it be the countdown associated with this disc, the track or other things along those lines. The next button is the manual layer selection so if the CD or SACD has dual layers you have the ability to select the CD or SACD depending on your preferences or force it to play the SACD if it doesn't automatically play it out of the box. You've got the skip back and forward buttons and then over the other side the stop, play pause, open close and standby button which is red. Above the standby button is the uh, illumination for power, an IR sensor and its dot matrix display. Now if I remember it's just a, a single line with a few other clues in um, illumination associated, associated with CD, SACD and uh, the resolution involved. Above it is a beautiful uh, CD tray and the mechanism involved is second to It's just, it's, it's stunning. Opening and closing it is, highlights the engineering pride that Macintosh have put into this player. And again, hang around for some photographs. Above the tray we have the uh, MCD350 model number, CDSACD and of course the Macintosh logo, all of which are illuminated via fibre optics from the back. Again spinning it onto its side you'll see uh, the elaborate nature of its chassis. There's actually a sort of a, a split in 
its chassis, which we'll see better at the back, associated with the analog and digital circuitry. And the front display, again separated. Looking at the back, we'll see the inputs, well the outputs of course associated with it. We've got a uh, IEC power and a basic warning about uh, the laser on board. Along the bottom chassis, we see the digital audio outputs, which it utilizes a single optical and a single coax or digital out. There's an emulation of model and serial number, and then above it, the analog circuitry, with the unbalanced or single-ended RCA outputs clearly labeled left and right. Then, the balanced audio outputs, again clearly labeled left and right. To complement it from a control perspective, there's an IR input, data in for control, as well as uh, Macintosh's control, or cascading of control, giving you an in and an out for power. So, this stunning sounding 32-bit CD player is second to none on its price. And I'm so grateful and so proud to have been able to share this with you today. Macintosh's MCD 350, unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.